Hey everyone, welcome to video 4-1 and in this one we are on page 164. We are beginning our discussion about how lines and angles interact. Um, we're going to move forward in this module and talk about parallel and perpendicular lines also, but for today we're just talking about what happens when two lines intersect. And so if we can look at here on page 164 at the bottom, um, Explore 2 talks about writing a proof for the vertical angles theorem. And that vertical angles theorem is in this box right here. Um, remember, anytime anything's in a box, you want to highlight it or put a star next to it or somehow draw your attention to it. It's really important that you know it. So we've got a diagram where we have two intersecting lines. And it says, if two angles are vertical angles, our new vocabulary word, vertical angles, then the angles are congruent. And you guys, vertical angles are simply when two lines intersect, the angles that are opposite each other. So 1 and 3 and 2 and 4. And what this vertical angles theorem tells us is that those pairs of angles are always congruent. So on the next page, page 165, we're going to introduce you to a new type of proof. This is not the type of proof we're going to be emphasizing from this point on, but it's important to just have some exposure to it. It's called a flow proof. Um, and it can be a little tricky to kind of navigate, so um, we're going to walk through those steps together, okay? Um, so the idea behind how we're proving that these opposite angles are congruent is that we're going to use the idea of uh, linear pairs and substitution in our proof to make that happen. So let's go to the next page. Again, here's our given. One and three are vertical angles. That's the only starting information that we have. And then we're being asked to prove here that 1 and 3 are congruent. Page 165, if you turn to page 165, we have, um, we're planning out our proof, okay? So because we know that 1 and 2 are a linear pair, and 2 and 3 are a linear pair, and again, that diagram, just really quickly, has angle 1, and 3 here, and 2 and 4. So we have 1 and 2 make a linear pair because they form a straight line here. And also, so do 2 and 3 going the other direction. So these pairs of angles are supplementary. And when we're saying they're supplementary, that means they add up to 180, both of them. And then by the transitive property, um, we can substitute in the value uh, M measure of angle 2 plus measure of angle 3 from this, um, from this second equation can get substituted in for 180 since they're both equal to 180. Um, and so what we have is filling in this proof. Um, we can kind of walk through, and you can see we're going two different directions, but we're coming back together. Um, that's kind of how the proof works. So we start on a proof. Uh, a flowchart proof where all of basically the arrows start coming from. So this is our start here by the star. Um, and then remember how we did this for two column. We always put the statement and then the reason in the column opposite it. In a flowchart proof, the reason gets written underneath the, um, the bubble, basically, on the flowchart. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you guys can... Uh, we can write this a little nicer. So if we start saying, first off, that 1 and 3 are vertical angles, that's our given, okay? And then from that information, we can say two different things, okay? Um, 1 and 2 are a linear pair, okay? And also 2 and 3, we can fill that in, 2 and 3 are a linear pair, and those are given by the way that the diagram is set up, and it says see the diagram. The next thing that we can do is we can say, okay, now that 1 and 2 are a linear pair, then 1 and 2 are in what relationship? Well, they're supplementary. And then 2 and 3 are also supplementary. What tells us that? That's the linear pair theorem. Remember, THM can be an abbreviation for theorem, okay? And then once we know those two supplementary relationships, we can actually create an equation that says what supplementary means, which is that one angle plus another angle's measures will equal 180, okay? 
So in this second statement along the bottom here, if 2 and 3 are supplementary, then it should be the measure of angle 2 and the measure of angle 3 in those fill-in boxes. Okay. So again, now that we know that they're both 180 degrees, both equal to the same thing, then they're equal to each other. Let's fill in our definition here. It's the definition of supplementary. Okay, and then now we would, if we were in a two-column proof, we would move on after those two statements had been made, and we would make the next statement right underneath it. However, in a flowchart proof, we say, okay, we've gotten to here, and um, depending on how much space you have, you might just extend these lines over um, to the right. We, we run out of page room, so they just follow the arrows down, you guys, follow the arrows down and around to the bottom. And so next, the next statement, if you're following here, um, we came down these arrows. So what do these two statements mean if they're both equal to 180? It means that they're equal to each other. And of course, that is the transitive property of equality. Okay, so if A equals C and B equals C, then A equals B basically is the transitive property of equality, kind of cuts out that middleman. And notice we're now going to the left again because we're following these arrows down. Okay, so once we know that the transitive property says this, what can we do? Well, notice what happened. We went from all four measures put together in an equation to, oh, now we just have measure at angle one and the measure of angle three because we dropped measure of angle two from each side by using the subtraction, subtracted it from both sides, property of equality. Equal, that's an L, <laughs> equality. And then um, from there, once we know that the measures are equal, then that means that the angles themselves are congruent. So angle one is congruent to angle three by the definition of what congruence means. And so we've proved our discussion there. So again, remember what we were um, being asked to do was prove that we were starting with that they're vertical angles, which we did, that was our only given, and then ending that the angles are congruent. So this is a proof of the vertical angles theorem. This is not something you'll have to do every time, and you certainly, like we said, won't have to have you emphasize a flowchart proof in the future as far as you duplicating it yourself. We're going to still emphasize two-column format, but I thought it was important for you guys to be exposed to the fact that this isn't just a statement. It actually does come from somewhere with some logical steps in between, okay? So that's it for uh, this video for 1A. We're going to go on and say what do the applications of these mean in the next video.